coming up on Kylie Makes It. Some of the best art and projects I've made with my friends. String art with Handyman Hal, cartoons with Super D, bike art with my friend Ben, and some frozen science in the lab with Dr. Bill and at home in the studio. Let's make it. Kylie Makes It. Hi, friend. It's me, Kylie. I'm so glad you're here because I am doing something so fun today. I've never really done this before. I'm making connect the dots. Have you ever done a connect the dot or dot to dot? Here's how it works. There's these little dots, connect the dot, and they look like that. And then maybe there's another one up here. And it's like this mystery. It's just dots. You don't know what they're even doing, but then they have numbers by them. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, and sometimes two like that. And then what you do is you use your pencil or marker or whatever you're doing to create a line to connect the dots in order. So you get to practice making lines, you get to practice counting, and you end up solving this like dot mystery. It's amazing. So like you start at one, that's where we start. What's the next number? Two. So you look for the one, then you look for the two, then you draw a straight line. Just like that. You're closer to solving the mystery. Two to three, okay. Three to four up here. Four to five straight across. Any ideas what our dot to dot is a real picture of? Five to six, a star. Isn't that amazing? Dot to dots are so fun, not only to do, but to make. When you make dot to, did you, did you hear that? I think someone's at my door. Come on, you beat me. Hello? Dirty package. I love getting packages in the mail. Who is this from? Y'all, this is from one of my good friends. His name is Handyman Hal. He's super handy. He can make and fix like anything. What do you think he sent me? Let's check it out. Instructions? Kylie and friends, start in the maker box for a special video? A video in the maker box? How's that work? And how would he even Get that in there. Handyman Hal. Tricky. All right. Um, oh. Hey Kylie, it's me, Handyman Hal. I hope you're having an awesome day. I know I am. Hey, I've got a really cool idea for a string art project. Yeah, cool, come look at this. Look at some of the materials we get to use. Right, we, of course, we've got some wood here. That's cool. Oh, and look, of course, you gotta have some string. We got some black string, we got some Eon yellow string, that's cool. All right, oh look, we got some really cool little screws there. Yep, and some little nails. Oh, those are really, really cool. And of course, this is cool. It's a magnetic clip. It's gonna be really interesting to use, right? And of course, I do know you got some paint hanging around somewhere, right? I bet you got all kinds of colors. Oh, and check this out. You get to use some really cool tools, just like me, one of my favorites. It's my hammer. Oh yeah, you get to use that, and you get to use a screwdriver. It's another one of my favorites. And of course, a paintbrush. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna have so much fun. So come on, let's get started, let's go. Okay, Kylie, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get the wood ready for you, okay? So safety first, safety glasses. Huh? Those are cool. All right, so we got this really cool piece of wood here. This. It's a one by four, and it's made from pine. It's really cool. And we get to use this awesome saw. This 
It's called a miter saw. Of course, you don't have one of these, you can use like oh, a hand saw or maybe a jigsaw. It would make it really easy to cut for you. All right, so I've got my tape measure here. And we're gonna measure out one foot, all right? There's one right there and we're gonna mark it with our pencil. There we go, that's really cool. All right, set that to the side and we're gonna cut it. It's gonna get really, really loud, all right? You might have to hold your ears. There it is, just like that. Okay, Kylie, I've got your wood all cut out for you. And this is kind of the base of what it's gonna look like. It's pretty cool, right? I am gonna do something really, really cool for you. I'm gonna pre-drill some holes so it makes it easy for you to put together, all right? So I've got my drill. We're just gonna drill three holes just like this right here. One there, one there just like that. And there, and there. Oh yeah. Tools make things so much easier. And they're all so fun to work with. Oh, wow, isn't that a cool sound? Tools do make some really cool sounds. All right, Kylie, now we're just getting your hardware all set. We got your nails in the baggie there. Let's find out how many screws we need. Oh, let's see here. We've got two, we got four, we've got six, we've got eight. So if we've got eight on this one, we need eight on that one. Eight plus eight. Oh, that's 16. All right, cool, let's count them out. Let's see, we need these screws here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One more. And that's 16. Oh, we gotta put your clamp in there. There we go. Oh, that's all set now. Oh, yeah. All right, now we just gotta ship it to you. Got our box. Oh, yep. Yeah. Let's get all your wood pieces in here. All right, there we go. Get those in there. Oh, nice. Gotta make sure they stay safe. All right, that looks good. All right, let's get your bag of hardware in there. Of course, gotta have instructions. Oh, cool, look. How about some safety cones? So you can remember me by. Oh, awesome, they're in there. Awesome. And now, it's all set to ship. And I know you're gonna make this awesome, right? Come on, let's go ship it off. Amazing! Handyman Hal made something for us to make together today. I can't wait! To the studio! Love surprise crafts, am I right? <laughs> all right, I got all the stuff out of the box and I'm ready to make it. How about you? Let's look at what we got here. We have two long boards and they have holes drilled in them already. All right. Oh, and then one, two, three, four. Four shorter boards, see? With how many holes each? Let's count. Two, four. Oh, two, four. Two, four. Two, four. Awesome. Four short boards with four holes each. And then um, this glob of hardware. <laughs> Why do you think these are all stuck to get, oh, the magnet. There's a magnet on this clip. And because these nails and this washer and these screws are metal, the magnet picks them right up. Oh, I love playing with magnets. What? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. We're crafting here. All right, whoa. Nail down. Got him. Do you remember a couple other things that Handyman Hal said we would need for this project? There were some tools. Do you remember what they were? A hammer. Da 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 da. Great for pounding nails. What else? A screwdriver. I have two. I have this one which you use with your hand. 
chur, 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 chur. And it has two ends on it. This one that looks like a star is called a Phillips head screwdriver. I don't really know why. Maybe Phillips just a star, who knows? And on this screwdriver, you can just flip that around. And then there's this flat one that just looks like a line. This is called a flathead screwdriver. Let's see. For these, <laughs> for these screws, look at the shape on the end. Do they look more like a line or a star? A star. So for these screws, we would need a Phillips head screwdriver. See, it just fits right in there. Cool. The other screwdriver I have. So instead of using my hand for the power, I just hit this button. Nice. This is the one we're gonna use today. The other thing he mentioned was a paintbrush, which you know I got some of those laying around. I also have paint and string, which we're gonna need for this project, but we don't need them quite yet, so hold tight on that. Let's lay it out how Handyman Hal laid it out when he drilled the holes. These four went like this. Awesome. And then the longer two went right over the top. Cool. All right, we'll just line them all up. Perfect. And then put in a screw. Doesn't this look so good? I screwed it all together and flipped it over. I'm so excited. The next step is to paint it. But first, I think we need to decide what we want the design to be. Let's see. The instructions tell us that after we paint it, to hammer these nails in. Then we'll take string and connect them together. Hmm. Hey, this is so crazy. That's a little bit exactly like what we were doing in the purple chair when this package came in the mail in the first place. It's basically a connect the dot, but it's a connect the nail with a string instead of a line from a marker. <laughs> I love it. Do you want to make a star? I think that would be so cool. So, all right, let's get painting. Maybe like a space scene, don't you think? Let's do it. Got my paint. I'm going to start with a coat of black. Paintbrush. Get around the edges. All right, all of our black is on. So now I'm going to add in some dark blue and some pretty purple to give it maybe more of like a galaxy effect. I'm gonna go ch -ch 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 to give it some texture. All right, I'm gonna even put it in my paint like that. So I'm gonna do both colors at once. And look, I just loaded up my brush with that dark blue and that pretty purple. And now I'm gonna go into my black just like this. Oh yeah. Does it look like a galaxy? Now I'm gonna do the same thing with some black just around the edges. Remember when Handyman Hal said that tools make really cool noises? I think paintbrushes do too, listen. It's like a very soft knocking. Hello, beauty here. All right. We got the background of our galaxy, good to go. Now I'm gonna put some little itty bitty stars and planets way in the background of our big star we're gonna make with the string. I'm gonna do this with a white paint marker. These are fun and make another fun sound. You gotta shake them up before you use them. Then you gotta kinda get them going by pressing them until the paint comes out. Now we can just make some stars. Looking spacey. I love it. I'm gonna wash out this brush while we wait for this paint to dry a little bit because it's important to take care of our tools, isn't it? All right, it's time to make the dots 
to our string art. So let's see, we wanna make this in the shape of a star. Oh, I know what we'll do, we'll make a template. I'm gonna use this extra piece of paper to draw my star shape. <laughs> Up, down, whoop, whoop, whoop. Cool. Now I'm gonna cut this out. You're a star. All right. Now I'm gonna lay my template down where I want my star to be on my piece of art. I'm gonna hammer my nails in all the way around the edge and then I can take this piece of paper out and I'll have the shape that I want. Time to hammer. I have to be very careful of my fingers. I'm gonna start at the tippy tippy top. Cool. Let's keep going. These kind of look like stars, don't they? But we still have another step to do. I'm gonna start by tying a knot around one of the nails. Ready to connect some dots? I am. Let's go all the way around first. That's fun. Let's just go crazy, connecting wherever we want to. end of your string, you're just gonna tie one more knot around your last nail. Give it a trim and you're done. <laughs> I can't wait to see this when the paint is dry. Ta-da! I wonder if Handyman Hal will like what we made together. I bet he will. <gasps> Do you hear that? My maker box is making sounds. Let's go check it out. Oh wow, Kylie, that looks awesome. You did an amazing job. Oh, check mine out. Got the perfect spot for it. Oh, now look awesome. And look, I did it in the shape of my hammer. It's really cool. That looks awesome. It was so fun learning about dots and lines, counting by twos, and making something together. Not just you and I like usual, but with our friend Handyman Hal too. Art is better when we share it. And when we make things together, it's usually better than it would ever be if it was just one person's ideas. Hi friend, it's Kylie. I'm so excited that you're here today because you and I are going to do something very special. We're gonna go meet my friend, Super D. Super D is an artist and he's a very special kind of artist. He's a cartoonist. Check it out. These are some of Super D's characters. Look. He imagined these characters in his mind. He drew them out made them on the computer, and then he tells stories with words and pictures that are called cartoons. He is amazing and I'm so excited for you to meet him. In fact, look, this is his cartoon drawing of himself. <laughs> are you ready to go to his studio? Let's do it. Here we are, we're at Super D's studio and I can't wait for you to meet him. Come on.
Super D. Hi, Kylie. How are you? Wow, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having us in your studio. No problem. Thanks <gasps> for joining. This is amazing. Can you show us around? Yeah, absolutely. This over here is where I keep all my sources of inspiration from. Oh, Video yeah. games, art made by friends, uh, books I like to read. I love Garfield, so I keep a lot of Garfield books yes, here. Yes, I see. Look at all this Garfield, friends. Uh, I'm friends with Jim Davis and a bunch of his Paws Inc. cartoonists. They have been really nice to me and have also, you know, like shared a bunch of guidance and stuff on terms of how to be a cartoonist. Wow. And so that's how uh, I keep up with my sources of inspiration is by just having this foundation of things that make me happy, you know? Yeah. Who's this? That is my character, Plush Maria. What? She is an absolute unit that does whatever she wants. <laughs> You created this character out of your mind, and now I can pick her up? Yep. Wow. Please, please, please show us how you make this stuff. Absolutely. Come on, Plush Maria. <laughs> so this over here is my little workshop space where wow. I make my comics. So you make a lot of your comics on the computer. Mm hmm But I also work traditionally, too. So when I start with making comics, I like to to sketch out everything. I have a few sketchbooks where I keep ideas and stuff with just words or phrases that I think would be fun to make into a comic. Yeah. And then once I get a good idea, such as the word lethargy. Lethargy. Lethargy, yeah. <laughs> I think of that idea and go, how can I convert that into a comic? So then I end up, once I get the idea of a comic, I start sketching it out. And then like the sketch phase is just yeah. where I just go, Okay, I just have the basic idea of what I want to draw and how I'm going to write it out. And when I get when I do that, then it goes into my Rosebud's uh, comic template. Cool. Once I get done with that and it's all finalized and I I self approve it, then I go over here to my art station where I start uh, working on the full fledged comic. As I said, every comic starts out with just an initial sketch. So when I work on comics, I always start out with just a little, a little sketch, a little white sketching, just to get the, just to get the idea of how I want the art to be look like. Once I do that for all the panels I want for the comic, then I start on the ink layer, which oh. is where I finalize my sketch art and put all the words into one location. Once I do that, I add on the colors. Then I add on little extra details like screen tones, which are little dots to help make the comic pop out a bit. Oh, wow. And once I do that, I put the words on and the comic is done. This was his sketch. And then he created the whole comic right on his computer. When I finish the comics, Rosebuds is in a really fun position where it's also a newspaper comic, like Garfield, Peanuts, Calvin yeah. and Hobbes. Yeah. So when I get done with that, I send the comic to the newspaper, which then gets printed for everyone to see. A real comic in a real newspaper. Super D, you are so cool. No. <laughs> That's amazing. Who are these people up here? Ah, these two are Pen and Ink. This one here is Pen. She's 19. She's kind of the main leader of uh -huh. their group. Uh, and this is her little sister, Ink. She's three years old. And <laughs> you can kind of tell the contrast between the two. Ink is the embodiment of Messy. She loves to play. She loves to paint. She uses her ponytail as her paintbrush, which is why she has a little black ink <laughs> on the back of her ponytail. I love that. And so the whole, in, the whole thing about their comics is that they are the creators of it. The comics are made oh. by Penny and Inkari Uart, which is their full names. Their nicknames are just Pen and Ink. And so the comics are all about them exploring the world of art, their relationship with each other as sisters, and just having fun with being creative. And it's all from their point of view. Like the art that you see in this book is supposed to be made by them. That's an amazing idea. Would you be willing to show us how to draw a cartoon? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to? Okay. 
Are you ready to learn how to draw a cartoon from a real life cartoonist? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. All you need to draw with us is some paper, a pen or pencil, and... An imagination. Imagination. How do we start? Well, what would you like to draw? I think Plush Maria. All right, yeah. So Plush Maria, her entire character is just based on, is based entirely on simple shapes. Okay. Like her head, it's just a circle. So let's go ahead and just draw a circle. I can draw a circle. Next, her body. Her body is also really simple. It's just a giant marshmallow. A marshmallow? <laughs> yeah, it's just a big marshmallow. Okay. Now, her arms are like little tubes with a little circle at the end of it, like so. And you can have it, you can have it loop her down like this. Yeah, think of like spaghetti noodles for her arms. Okay. Like that? Yeah, perfect. With a circle. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to do her world famous absolute unit walk. Okay. <laughs> so first we start off with her right leg over here and we're just going to have it look like a little boot. Her entire, her entire leg looks just like a, like a sock is a better example. A sock? Yeah, just looks like a sock and like that. Okay, kind of like straight out. Okay. Yeah. Now, her left leg is going to be like the sock, except a little more bent back, right. like so. Oh, wow. That makes it look like she's walking. walking. Cool. It kind of looks like a lightning bolt or a Z or something. Yeah. All right, let me see. Okay, and then I go like this, like a little L, mm -hmm. and then choop. okay. And so now we're going to add on a little bit more detail to her. So uh, what I like to start off with, she wears a flower headband. So I always like to start out with the flower on top of her head. Like it has six little nubs on it. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. One, two. And also on the inside, there's a little G inside. Hmm, okay, it's kind of a fancy G. It's a very fancy it's G. It's made out of straight lines instead of a curve. Yes. All right, G, G, got it, got it, got it. We're gonna start off with a little, a little curve near the flower to signify her hair. All right, right here. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to start off with another little, I won't say a lightning bolt, but it helps showcase where her ear is at, which is like right here. All right. So it's kind of a straight line that curves just a little bit. Yes. Now for here, this will be just a half circle for her ear, and it's a really big ear. Okay. <laughs> like so. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go past the circle we made for her head. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Now we're going to do another big curve around here, around her, over her, uh, her flower to signify her hairband. And then we're going to make a straight up loop and have it connect to the curve that we just made over here. Okay. This feels tricky. Okay. You got this. <laughs> Doesn't need to be perfect. We're just practicing. Perfect. Okay. That's cool. really good. Then we're going to go ahead and have the flower head being connect back with another curve. We're going to have it connect to her ear like so. All right. So I come up here and go like that. And then over here, we'll do a backward C for her other ear. And the final thing for her hair is it's going to be just a big wavy loop to signify that her hair is moving. Wow, 
it's amazing how a simple line can show so much. Right? Like that line is still, but because of how you drew it, it looks like it's in motion. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, let's see if I can do it. Mm, okay, you do a big one like this. And now, her face. And now this is the most iconic part, so we have to be careful about this. Yes, you gotta get it right. Yes. <laughs> so, we, for her eyes, we draw two ovals. Alright. An oval here. And, oh, it doesn't look big enough. It's okay, it's okay. Okay. Now we'll do an upside down smile for her nose. Then just a little, a little, it's not a big smile, it's just a small smile. That's, oh, yeah. that's the tricky part. Yeah, okay. She's not too happy, she's just... Yeah. <laughs> All right. You got this. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Now for her <laughs> eyes, we'll have, we'll go into the center of the ovals and just draw two straight lines. Like so. Wow. And then two dots for eyes. Those simple lines give her such an amazing facial expression, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. Okay. We're going to go back to her arms real quick to okay. give her sleeves so that we can show that she's wearing a shirt. And then for her marshmallow body, we'll go back and draw another line towards the bottom so that way we can signify she's wearing pants too. Cool. And then just above, we're gonna go back to the feet real quick and show little curves like so to show to continue off to wearing pants. I like how you make these lines a little bit curved instead of perfectly straight, because it makes it look like her legs and her tummy and her arms are round. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, just a little curve makes it look round instead of flat. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna do a curve under her foot and draw two lines under them. Okay, let's see. That shows the bottom of her shoe. One more thing. Okay. So, Plush Marie, as you see on Plush Marie's shirt here, she wears something that says Absolute Unit. But the special thing about Plush Marie is that her sh every shirt that you see her in is always different. Oh. Meaning that you can have her wear whatever word, funny word you can think of on her shirt. Cool. So as long as it's funny, you can write it on there. I have an idea. And then we're just gonna finalize, give her a little shadow under her, under her to show that she's walking. And then we're gonna go ahead and color her shoes, her pants, and her hair black. Okay. And don't worry about being perfect, because Plush Marie is just all about being simple and fun. We like that. I am going to do, just need you to stand right there and smile. What do you think? I love it. It's me. And Plush Maria going on an absolute adventure. <laughs> it looks just like me. <laughs> if people want to see more of your work, where could they go to read and look at your cartoon? Uh, they can go on superd2.com. S-U-P-R-D-E-E-2.com. Awesome. Awesome. Did we have so much fun today? Yeah. Let's go back to the purple chair and talk all about it. Wow. Wasn't that so fun meeting Super D and seeing his studio? Thank you.
He is so nice and so talented. I love seeing how he makes what he makes and he even helped us draw Plush Maria. I wonder if you drew one at home. Guess what? As fun as that was, there's even more fun because you know how you and I, when we make art together, at the end, we try to decide how we can share that art with other people? Well, today, Super D decided to share his art with us. <laughs> I'm so excited to see what he sent home with us. Let's check it out. Oh, these are the drawings that we made with Super D. Here's Plush Maria saying, Kylie is cool. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> he even signed it. And here is the cartoon he made of me. Me and Plush Maria. Doesn't it look just like me? <laughs> thanks. Absolute adventures with Kylie and Plush Maria. I love it. Thank you, Super D. There's a whole nother bag he gave me. It says Rosebuds, like the name of one of his cartoons with the three sisters, remember? Whoa, there's a lot of stuff in here, Super D. There's stickers. I'm gonna have to think of somewhere very special to put these. Here's the Rosebud Sisters. There's these heart stickers with pen and ink. Remember, they're the ones who made their very own comic. Oh, here's a button with the Rosebud Sisters on it. And a button with pen and ink. That is so fun. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a cartoon that you drew be on a sticker or a button? <gasps> wow, look at this, you guys. It's a whole calendar of Rosebud cartoons. That means that every month, there's a whole beautiful big drawing, a whole cartoon for each month that Super D drew and that I get to look at every day. That's amazing. Today we are in Anderson, Indiana at Buckskin Bikes and we're going to talk to my friend Ben who owns a store and who fixes and makes bikes. Aren't you excited? Let's go inside. Hello, Hi, ben. how are you? Come on. We're good. Come on in. Wow, it's amazing in here. There are so many different kinds of bikes. We try to keep a lot of different types because we see a lot of different people and people ride bikes all different places, right? That's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about the different kinds of bikes and what makes them different? Totally. So one of the big differences that you can see on a lot of bikes are the tires, right? Yeah. So this one here, if you look, is really bumpy and knobby. And this is really good for gripping the dirt and the grass when you're riding off road, right? Ooh. So we call this a mountain bike. A mountain bike. Something over here you could see. Yeah, look, this one here, it's about the same size, but it's much smoother, right? So that makes it roll faster and smoother on the sidewalk or on a bike path. Awesome. So we've got big bikes, we've got little bikes, we've got bikes with flat handlebars like this one, and we've got bikes with curly handlebars, drop handlebars like that. Tell me about this blue bike back here because I see something funny about it. Yep, what, well, first of all, what's funny about it? I see two seats, two sets of pedals, and two handlebars. Yep, that means two people can ride it. That is so fun. What is your favorite bike in this whole shop? Well, my favorite is my own bike, oh, right? Can we see it? Totally, it's right over here. So I'm pretty tall, so this is a pretty tall bike, right? Yeah. But where do you think I ride this bike? Hmm, let's look at the tires and see if we can tell where Ben rides mm -hmm. his bike. All right, are they smooth 
or bumpy? Bumpy. And they look a little dirty, which tells me that Ben rides his bike in the dirt and the grass. Is this a mountain bike? This is a mountain bike, that's wow. right. So it's a lot of fun to ride. And another thing you might notice, kind of like that blue one we just looked at, mine has two seats. Now, it only has one set of pedals though. Hmm. So what do you think happens here? Well, two people must ride it. Yes. Who is the second person? My son, Charlie, rides with me. Charlie? He's only five, and so he just gets to come along for a ride. He just sits here, and his feet go right here, and his hands go right here, and he just gets to come along for the ride. So we go to school that way, and we ride mountain bike trails that way, too. It's that really fun. so fun. Hi, Charlie. Your <laughs> bike is awesome. Do you guys think you would like to ride a bike like this to school? Oh yeah. That sounds super awesome. Ben fixes bikes, makes bikes, does all sorts of things with bikes in his workshop. Ben, would you show us your workshop? Absolutely, it's right back here, come on. Welcome to Ben's workshop. Ben, show us all the parts of this amazing bike. Absolutely, yeah. So bikes are cool because there's all types of parts on a bike and they all have their own name, right? So this part here, the main part, we call a frame, right? Because it's real strong and it holds all the other pieces together. Some of the parts you may already know, right? Like this. Wheel. Yep. And then also, how about these? Handlebars. Yep, that's it. <laughs> and we put grips on the end, and that way you can hold on real good and your hands don't slip. This here, this is a brake lever, and we can pull that, and when you pull it, it makes the brake down here move, and that grabs on the wheel. So watch, if I spin the wheel, and grab that brake, it makes you stop. I never so, knew that's how that worked. It's pretty cool. They work on cables, right? See the little piece of wire here? Yeah. That's how brakes work on bicycles. This here, this is our chain, right? And this is what makes the back wheel go. So these here are your pedals, and that's where your feet go. So as you move your pedals, it turns the chain, and it makes the back wheel rotate, and that's what pushes you forward. Whoa! So your pedals make you go, and the brakes make you stop. So you have a lot of control over how you go. That's forward and back, right? The other yeah. part about riding a bike is turning. An important An important part, part. <laughs> yep. So that happens right here. So we have our frame that we talked about. The front part of the frame, we call it a fork because it's got two tongs, kind of like a... A fork. A, like a fork, yep. And then the wheel goes into the fork. And right here, you can turn your handlebars. And we have a set of bearings in here. Bearings are a thing that's in a lot of bicycles. Let me get some, I'll show you. Okay. Actually, here's a nice big one. So this oh. is a bearing, and it has little balls on it. And what it does is it allows the two pieces to roll smooth against each other. So we have lots of bearings in bicycles. That's a really common part. Cool. Let's take the wheel off. First thing we're gonna need is a wrench. Wrench. And that will help us loosen these nuts on the side of the wheel. We'll do both sides. So we'll loosen this the rest of the way. And then we can Whoa! take the wheel all the way off the bike. Can I hold it? Absolutely. Ben, what are some things that we should check before we go on a bike ride on our bikes? That's a great question. Uh, it's really easy. There's three things that you should look at every time you get on your bike. And they're so easy to remember because it's A, B, and C, right? Letters we're pretty familiar with. <laughs> so the first one, A, is for air. A you always wanna make air. sure there's good air in your tires. How do you know? Great question. Every tire will tell you. It will tell you a number on the side of it, and that's how much air pressure you should put inside. But as a general rule, if you can squeeze it and it feels really hard, that's good, you're ready to ride. But if you squeeze it with your hands and it's kind of soft and squishy, you're probably gonna wanna put some air in it because that's the best way to prevent a flat. Cool. Yep. B, pretty easy as well, B is for brakes. You always wanna make sure your brakes are working because if you can't stop, it makes it hard to go, right? Or it makes it dangerous to go. <laughs> so these that's- These look good. These look good, that's air, brakes, and then C, chain. 
So you gotta make sure you can stop. You also gotta make sure you can go. So you wanna make sure your chain isn't too loose or falling off or broken or too rusty or anything like that. Um, and so if those three things are all working, your air, your brakes, and your chain, you're probably ready to ride. That's awesome. A, B, C, air, brakes, and chains. Ben, what do you like about bikes and why do you like making them? I like bikes because they're people powered. It people powered. Yeah, this bike doesn't go anywhere on its own, right? Right. But as soon as you put your energy into it, you can go all the way across town or all the way across the world. It's really cool to me that bikes help people get other places way faster than you could ever do on your own feet. True. But it also doesn't need any of the things that a car needs, like gasoline and all of those big, expensive, difficult things. On a bike, you can just do it yourself. It just needs us. Just people. There's so many details and colors and shapes on these bikes. It's amazing art. There's all kinds of fun pieces, yeah. It's really cool. And one of the fun things that you can do actually, when we have broken parts that we can't really use for bicycles anymore, you can totally take those pieces and make all kinds of other stuff out of it. Like what? Well, I have a friend and he makes jewelry. So look at these. Here's some earrings that he made. What? And they have, well, you tell me, what do you think that is on there? Hmm. It looks like pieces of this chain. That's exactly right. So he takes chain pieces and makes jewelry out of it. That's I also so have cool. seen other people that took wheels and put glass in here and made stained glass pieces out of wheels. They took pieces of bikes and made them into all kinds of art. Yeah, do you think that's something you and your friends would be interested in? Uh, I've got some I've got some old parts out back if you guys wanted to take them to your studio. What yes. do you think? Yes, yes, a huge yes. We want to do that, right? Cool. All right, let's see what you got. Let's check them out. So out here, this is where we put all of our old bikes that we take pieces off of. Wow! Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So we call this the junkyard, and we come out here and find parts and pieces, because sometimes they don't make what we need anymore if we're working on old bikes, or sometimes parts are just unavailable. Yeah. So sometimes we have to get creative, but also this is where we find pieces to make art with. Let's look around. And let's see what else we got here. Oh, here's an old seat. Whoa. I don't know how much art, oh look, it had water in it. <laughs> See if we can come up with something. Who knows? Let's see. Oh, look, here's just handlebars. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you can see the old cables. Remember we talked about cables earlier? Yeah. Are you getting some art ideas out here? Ben, thank you so much for having us here at your shop, Buckskin Bikes in Anderson, Indiana. If people want to learn more, yeah. Where can they go? We have a website, buckskinbikes.com. We that's, try to keep it pretty easy. That's yeah. easy to remember. Yeah, so check us out. We're on social media as well. Cool. But I really hope you have fun with this stuff. I hope you make some cool things. I can't wait to see what you and your friends come up with. We can't either. All right, here you go. Thank you so have much. Have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. Let's go to the studio. Come on. Welcome to the studio. Wasn't that so fun and interesting with Ben at Buckskin Bikes? I learned so much about bikes and I saw so many different kinds of bikes that I didn't even know existed before. I love riding my bike and now I'm gonna love it even more because I know the ABCs of how to be safe and I also know all the parts of how it works. So cool. I put all of the bike parts we got from Ben out on my table in my studio. Plus some other things I found. Uh, glue, pliers, wire, we have metal plates and washers, bolts and nuts, and I even found these little reflectors like we have on real bikes. So excited to make um, whatever we're making. Usually when I make art, I know what I wanna make first, and then I decide how I'm gonna make it and what I'm gonna make it out of based on what the, I want the final product to be. This is kind of fun because it's going the other way. We're starting with our materials and then deciding what we're gonna make 
based on the materials we have. That's fun. Okay, so it's time to get creative. We have this bike seat, which is still wet from being outside at Buckskin Bikes. That's kind of fun. Uh, we have handlebars with some cables and, oh, another reflector, some brakes. Hmm. We have this great big tire rim. What shape is that? A circle. And what's really cool about this tire rim is it has all these little holes in it where the spokes from the wheel would normally go. I bet we can do something with that. We have pedals from the bike. And I took apart these gears and these are the little things that went in between the gears so that they could turn. I like their kind of yellowy orange color. That kind of matches those reflectors. Do you have any ideas yet? Let's think about bikes. How does riding a bike make you feel? story I told you in the purple chair at the very beginning of today about riding my bike around that corner for the first time when I was a kid and how the corner went down really gradually into a hill and how I could quit pedaling and just coast down the hill and I saw those amazing lakes and I felt so free like a do you remember like a bird. What if we used all of these bike parts and different things that I found to make a sculpture of a bird? Not quite sure how we're gonna do it yet, but I'm ready to figure it out. Are you? All right. this big circle as kind of a frame. Do you think that's a good idea? Like if we put it up and it helped hold all the pieces of our sculpture? I love that idea. And what if we used these petals to help it stay in place once our bird was on it? Yeah, I'm going to use wire to attach, <laughs> to attach these petals to the frame. I think this is an incredible start. Now we have our frame. I think it's time to make our birds wings. Wouldn't these handlebars be an amazing start for the bird wings? I think so. I'm going to use more wire to attach the handlebars to our frame. All right, we have our bird wings. What should we use for our bird's head? Do you see anything kind of triangle shaped? What if we attached the bike seat so it looked like the head of our bird? I think this is a good idea. Now that the main frame of our bird is done, I put her up on the easel so that you would be able to see her easier as we work on her in the studio together. 
Can you imagine the bird yet? Can you see it? This is her head and she's facing this way. These are her majestic wings. If you can't see it yet, that's okay. It's just in my imagination for now. But part of the amazing part of art is you can take an idea that's in your imagination and have other people see it. Like, see it with their eyes. Speaking of seeing, I think this bird needs an eye, don't you? I think I wanna use all these cool circle things that I have to make an eye. I'm gonna start with a gear. I'm going to be attaching my pieces together with hot glue because I love hot glue. <laughs> me. Hello, or should I say, tweet tweet. Can you make a bird sound? That's amazing. Okay, let's make her body. I mean, we have to use this, right? made her tail feathers out of some chain. Is it starting to look more like a bird? Head, eye, body, tail feathers, and wings. I hope you're starting to see it like I imagine it. attach these two metal plates that have holes in them to the handlebars. Now I'm going to use all this cable that we got from Ben to make wings. It's finished. Friends, this might be one of my favorite sculptures I have ever made. Thank you so much for helping me with it. I love all the shapes and lines. I love how random it is. <laughs> and I love that it reminds me what it feels like to ride on a bike. Do you recognize some of the parts that Ben showed us on a bike in the sculpture? Can you find a gear? Yeah, there's gears right here and here and here. Can you find a bike chain? Oh yeah, we use bike chains for the tail feathers and it's here on the big wings too. There's lots of cables from the bike all throughout the wings. These feathers came from the inner tube that goes inside of your tire that you fill up with air. Of course, there's the bike seat that we used for the head and the handlebars that we used for the wings and the rim of the tire for our frame. I am so excited to show this to Ben from Buckskin Bikes and see what he thinks. Let's take a picture and send it right now. Hey, Kylie and friends, that sculpture is awesome. I'm so impressed with what you guys did. Thank you so much for coming to our store. It was great to have you here and you're welcome back anytime. Ben loved our sculpture. That is so cool. Ben, we had so much fun. And then we had so much fun in the studio together. But I am guessing that at home, you don't have a bunch of 
bike parts laying around. I mean, maybe you do, but I know I don't usually. So you might be wondering, what can I make after this show? Let me tell you. I challenge you to an art bag mystery challenge. Mm -hmm. Get a bag, put some random stuff in it, or have someone else put some random stuff in there for you. Maybe a grown up or a sibling if you have one, a friend, a teacher. And then your challenge is to make some art only with the things in that bag. That's the creative challenge. Let's see what's in this one. Whoa! Very rolly. Now that I got my beads under control, let's see what's in here. We got some pipe cleaners, crayons, beads, <laughs> tape, scissors, and post-it notes. Now, Extra points in the challenge if you use the things in a way that you wouldn't typically use them. Just like we used a bike chain to make a tail for our bird. That's not normally what bike chains are used for. I'm gonna start, I think, by making a nice background for whatever we make here. And maybe by putting my beads somewhere nice and safe. Hmm. Those kind of look like <gasps> wheels. We should make a bike. All right. Um, let's see, maybe we could use the crayons as part of the sculpture instead of just drawing with them. Okay, and these will be the wheels. This is a bike we're making with our imagination. So what could we use the pipe cleaners for? Because this is art, we can make it look like anything we want. So um, wouldn't it be pretty cool to have a bike that could fly? <laughs> like with wings on it? Let's do it. This is so funny. And look, there's a little bit of the crayon left, so it kind of can write as it drives or flies. Whoa, cool. Or this way too. Maybe you start riding this bike by pedaling it on the wheels, and then you pedal faster, 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 and Hi, it's me, Kylie, and I'm back with my friend, Dr. Bill, and my lunch. <laughs> Last time we were together, we froze my lunch very fast, but Dr. Bill had another idea of how we could make art out of this food. Okay, so I'm kind of a scientist and I love doing things complicated. Ah. So there's another way you can freeze your food. It's called a freeze dryer. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it very cold. We're gonna suck all the air out. And when we suck all the air out, all the water is gonna go out too. And so what you're gonna have is a warm, but completely dry fruit that you can then use to make art. I can't even wait. That's it. It's been 24 hours and our lunch is freeze dried, right? That's right, it's freeze dried. All right, let's get it out. Okay, you wanna go ahead and try to open the door? Yeah. All right. Is it gonna do anything weird? No, no, you just can't open it. Try it, go ahead. I'm very strong. I know, it's just one little latch, that's all. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, yeah. no, you gotta, you gotta turn the latch, oh. yeah. <laughs> there you go, see, see it, right? No, just keep, there you go. Oh. Now you, <laughs> yay, there you go, yeah, see? Still not, mm-mm. Yep, not gonna work. So this, we created a <laughs> vacuum. We sucked all the air out. Okay. Okay, so that, that means when the water that was in the fruit wanted to leave, it was really easy for it to leave because we sucked all the air out. Kind of like when you suck on a straw. Yeah, you're pulling the water. The water comes up. 
In order for you to get the door open, we have to break the seal. We have to break the vacuum. We have to let all the air come back in. Okay. Okay, so there's a very special lever back there, and you just you just turn that little black lever, and you'll be able to let this all... One? Yeah, that's it. Is there a way I have to turn it? Left or right? Just try. Try. There's only one way you can... There you go. There you go. And you can see the seal right here will get smaller and smaller and smaller. See how it's getting tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny. Oh, you can kind of see yeah, the air coming it, back in. And then it's, yeah, see right there? Now, if you try to open it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> easy. Check it out. So, Whoa. why don't you take a look at your lunch? It's, I think you might uh, be surprised okay. by what it looks like. Ooh, cold. Very good. <gasps> yes. Oh, crispy. Crispy lettuce. Who doesn't like crispy lettuce? I mean. Whoa. Look at, they look like they exploded. Yeah, what that happened one? here? Yeah, if the water is trying to get out and it can't find a way out, it just goes boom. Wow. And the boom was captured. That's amazing. Yeah. Whoa. More explosions! Yeah. Blueberries, they don't, they, there's nowhere for the water to go. So unless you poke a little hole, they just blow up. They look kind of beautiful. It yeah. looks like crystal. Yeah, and you can see the deep purple and the white. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, and they're all different. Every single one released in a different way. Oh, a little exploding, but not as much. Yeah, these are just super light. If you pick oh, wow. them up. Yeah, they don't weigh anything. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean a strawberry is mostly made of yeah, water? Yeah, yeah, like 98%. So it's way up there, yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Okay, so now this lunch is ready to be turned into the material to make art. And all we have to do is grind it up. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's do it. Okay. Bill's over there getting some stuff ready to grind these up. Do you want to taste one with me? <laughs> I don't believe him that this tastes like a blueberry because it just feels like cereal. That is the crunchiest blueberry I have ever had in my whole life. What? <laughs> it's like a strawberry chip. Has he seen me yet? He did. Oh. Oh, the bananas are the best. Oh yeah. Oh man. You're gonna need some water. <laughs> Thirsty. Now that my lunch is freeze dried, we're gonna turn my lunch into paint. We're gonna do part of that right here in the lab. We're going to use this. Have you ever seen this before? This is called a mortar and pestle. Mm -hmm. And this is how you can grind things up. So what we're going to do is grind up these freeze-dried fruits and spinach, turn it into a powder, because there's no water left in it, remember? Then we're gonna take that powder, which will be the pigment for the paint we're gonna make back in my studio. We're gonna start with this spinach. Put it right down here. Take this part. Put it right in the middle. And then you're just gonna roll it like this until it's ground up. Look, do you see how this green powder is starting to be formed? Yeah, that's going to make us some green paint. And then we'll paint with it. Have you ever painted with spinach before? <laughs> Me either. But we won't be able to say that for very long. Let's head to the studio. Hi, welcome to the studio. It's kind of looking lavish today, isn't it? It was so much fun freeze drying lunch with Dr. Bill. And now we're gonna grind up the things that we freeze dried to make our own paint. Paint is made up of two things. One, pigment. Pigment is the color part of paint. That's what we're making today. We're gonna take the color from these freeze-dried strawberries, for example, and grind it up, that will be the pigment. 
The other thing that paint is made out of is a binding agent. The binding agent is what holds the pigment together so that there's not just like powder going everywhere. We are going to be experimenting with different kinds of pigments today and a lot of different kinds of binding agents to see what we can come up with. The first thing we need to do is finish grinding up our freeze dried things that we have. Now, I already did some strawberries. Look how pretty that is. I did some spinach in the mortar and pestle. And now I'm going to do our freeze dried bananas. Now, I was able to do the spinach with a mortar and pestle like this, but the bananas and the strawberries are a little bit tougher and a little bit bigger. So I used a coffee grinder. Woo! Banana powder. <laughs> Brush that into my dish. Coffee grinders and blenders, things like that, have very sharp blades inside. So make sure you have a grown up with you. And grown ups, make sure you unplug your blender or coffee grinder before you get in there to get all your pigment out. Awesome. Look at this banana y pigment. Mm. You might remember that we also freeze dried blueberries. However, when I sealed it up to keep it nice and dehydrated, that means de-watered, no water in there, I must not have sealed it up well enough because when I opened this up, it was all sticky. How did that happen? Well, water from the air rehydrated, re-watered these blueberries because it was able to get into the bag. I'm still gonna try to blend them up to see what happens. Nothing to lose. Do you have to go through this much work to get pigments? Not at all. You can use spices that you might already have at home in your kitchen. I'm gonna use this empty egg carton as my palette today and the place where I'm gonna mix my pigments and binding agents together. I drew a little map of this palette on a piece of paper so I can keep track of what's in each circle as we mix it. I have all of my pigments on this side and all of my binding agents on this side. Let's get mixing. What do you wanna start with? Hmm, how about the strawberry powder. So on my little key, I'm gonna write S for strawberry. What binding agent should we start with? How about just water? All right, we'll record what we did. I'm gonna write water and then paint a little bit. Kind of a nice light pink. All right, cool. I like strawberry and water. What's next? How about some honey? All right, strawberry and honey. It's thicker, isn't it? Woof. Oh, wow. I think the honey added some yellowish color to it. So it looks a little more orange. It's beautiful. What do you want to try next? Let's do something wild. Let's do some dish soap. I don't know. Whoa. The dish soap was clear, so it didn't add a lot of different color to it, but it did make it thicker than the water. I think that's my favorite so far. And last but not least, let's use some lotion. really thick and kind of smeary. Hard to paint with. I don't think I'll use the lotion again. Oh, whoa, that was a surprise. This didn't look like it was gonna be very cool when I ground it up, but when I put the binding agent in, this really beautiful purple came out. Look at that. Okay, we've tried all of the binding agents so far. Here's a list of the ones that I've tried. The ones that I'm going to make the rest of my paints with are a mix of these ones, which I felt like worked the best. Water, dish soap, honey, glue, shampoo, and corn syrup. All right, I'm gonna try some spices.
Look at all of the paint we made. We use so many different pigments and binding agents to make all kinds of different effects. Check it out. Wow. I think the only thing left to do is to use this guide and these paints to paint something. Might have to be abstract. We'll see. If you want to make more art with me, I want to make more art with you. Just search for Kylie Makes It. K-Y-L-E-E. -E. That's me. See you next time. <laughs>